what are some of the major challenges that going remote and going hybrid uh, has posed to you and your team and your enablement efforts? Um, and has anything really surprised you uh, as, as you've been going through this? Yeah, uh, big, big question to start with, for sure. Um, I think, you know, challenges that the first one is getting folks to stay engaged, right? Two, two years of Zooms, is, it's rough. <laughs> um, and, when, and when your whole, you know, purpose is to get people to want to learn and want, want to be engaged, um, that, that can be tough and take some creativity, um, keeping people motivated um, in time like this. And, and um, probably my biggest challenge, uh, it's onboarding new people remote is hard. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, there's no, there's no really way around that. It's, it's just hard. And, and, you know, and that's kind of their first impression of your company and, and how y'all do things. And at Active Track, we're, we're permanent, we're remote first, we're staying that way. Um, so it's, it's a, you know, it's not a temporary shift. So we've really had to rethink how we do that completely um, to make it, you know, more engaging and more exciting for people instead of just staring at a Zoom screen all day. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of the number one challenges I hear, right? And we're going to touch on onboarding more later, but mm -hmm. totally, I, I bet a lot of people uh, on the call can, can empathize with that. Jessica, how about you? What are you, what are you, what, what's been challenging? What's going on? What's surprised you? What's top of mind? I, you know, I think just the level of um, just the difference, I think, in having to focus on things that where when you're in person and you can kind of just wing it and you can kind of just go with the flow, uh, you have to have a lot more structure. You have to have a lot more planning and preparation and very, you know, be very detail focused and detail oriented so that you know when things are happening and where things are happening and have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, because technology doesn't always work and it's, it can be difficult to try to manage people in a virtual world when you, you know, it's easier to do that when everybody's in the same room. So I think that just being able to prepare and over prepare and have a plan for the plan, um, I think that's been the biggest difference or nuance in this new um, hybrid virtual world that I've seen personally. Yeah. Totally. And Katie Beth, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that's really hard is is keeping the energy and engagement level up. Whether you're remote or some of the team is together and that that equity that you want to have. I mean, one of the things that I was on another call yesterday and we were talking about the nomadic nature of society that's shifted through COVID. And that means that there's more competition for the top performers. And so we have to be incredibly engaging. And so we played music at the beginning of this, and that's something that we've incorporated in all of our meetings. I have I started my my playlist at a virtual sales kickoff, all virtual last year, from nine songs to nine. I'm above a hundred um, because we had walk up songs, we've got break songs, just to kind of keep it exciting. And you never know what's going to be the next song, so and people contributed to it. So um, I think that creating remote energy and kind of a little bit of an element of surprise takes a ton. To Jessica's point, a ton of planning, and you have to have multiple layers of that um, to be able to be successful and keep that energy alive um, and, and, and make it as equitable as possible. Yeah. Energy, equity, right? Engagement, all of those things are so tough to achieve um, in a virtual hybrid world. Uh, Jessica, Bobby, Joe, any, any, any tips or tactics that you guys have used to to, to keep people engaged, keep people energized as, as you go through onboarding training, ongoing learning, you know, what, what does that look like for your teams? One of the things that I was just gonna, that I mentioned, you know, we we're talking about equity, just inclusion is so much more difficult in a virtual world. So I feel like as a sales enablement practitioner and as sales leadership, it just becomes more and more apparent how much you really have to pull and engage on people. So being cognizant of um, making sure your, um, your Ds are kind of not dominating the conversation, your high Ds are not dominating the conversation and that you can pull some of those additional uh, personality types into the conversation and, and making sure that they're included in any activity that you're doing. Um, so being cognizant of, cognizant of that in meetings and making sure to, to, to literally call people out and not in a good way, but in a positive way to ask them to share their thoughts or share their feelings or their experiences when you're walking through a meeting or even a training and just having everybody kind of be on the same page and allowing them an opportunity to have a voice when they may not 
have wanted to have a voice in a virtual world um, previously. I love that. And Bobby Joe, I'm gonna let you go in just a sec, but sure. I think I think that is such a key point because if you are, are in a live training session, often your type A personalities, your, your Ds, your drivers, right? They're, they're gonna dominate the conversation. It's what they do. It's what a lot of people are used to. So in many live meetings, those are the only people you hear speak, right? But there are so many different types of people throughout your organization that actually going remote, going, going virtual, going hybrid can level the playing field for people. If, if you use tools like recorded video, for instance, if you have a platform that can deploy a video that uh, contains a training session, contains a, you know, a, pitch, uh, a pitch example, whatever it is, everybody can go and watch that video. They can watch it on their own time. They can respond to it on their own time. If you're a little bit more introverted, if you need more time to think um, about your response, you can do that and then, and then comment on that video and go back and forth and interact with your peers asynchronously, but in a more equitable way. Um, so that's something that, that I've seen that's really worked um, to, to help, again, level the playing field in this situation. So great, great point. But Bobby Joe, why, why don't why do you go? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with all that. Um, I've seen some real success with, um, you know, for doing a training session, having a lot of that um, done pre-work wise, you know, videos, questions and answers so that when we do come together, it is purely the discussion element of it. So there, there is a lot more engagement versus like, you know, your D's constantly being the ones that are raising their hands to answer. So you can actually, um, you know, choose people that you want to discuss their answers with. Um, another, another really um, interesting way that we've done this um, is kind of giving some of those people that maybe aren't, don't usually speak up um, ahead of time, the opportunity to speak by prepping them beforehand saying, hey, we really want to call out your deal and want you to talk about this win. But instead of putting them on the spot, hey, are you, you, know, are you cool with sharing this and giving them that opportunity beforehand to prep for that. So that way more people can get involved instead of just the, the same few people that tend to speak up most often in meetings. And it really helps kind of drive the conversation in different directions for sure.